I hope you're having a great day. Well, uh, today I want to talk about intermittent fasting again. We've done several videos on intermittent fasting, the benefits and everything. But as weeks and weeks go by, we have tremendous amount of feedback pouring in from around the world about how intermittent fasting is impacting people positively, negatively, everything else. So I want to keep on sharing what we keep learning about intermittent fasting with everyone. And there are still a lot of people who do it the wrong way. There are some people who are doing it the right way. There are some people. And I think uh, a lot of y'all have already seen the testimonials that flow in from around the world on how intermittent fasting have impacted them. You see, it's very easy to Google the benefits of intermittent fasting, to Google the benefits of exercise or a particular diet or whatever it is. That's information, that's knowledge, those are people's opinions. But when we do it ourselves, when we try it ourselves, you know, we realize whether intermittent fasting suits us or it doesn't suit us. <clears throat> I think the first point of observation is we need to stop thinking and making intermittent fasting into a fad. You see, the sad part of, of humanity today is we constantly make everything fads. Socializing has become a fad. Certain exercise programs have become a fad. Diets have become a fad. And today you hear people walking around saying, oh, I'm doing a 16-8. I'm doing a 16-8. I'm doing a 16-8. Like what the hell is a 16-8? Just because some Google article told you that 16 hours of fasting and 8 hours of you know, eating, it doesn't make sense. Let's break that myth right now. Okay? Every human being has a different sleep time. Some people sleep for seven hours, some sleep for eight, some sleep for six, okay? Everyone has a different digestive period. Some people digest a meal within three hours, some people need four hours, some people need five hours, okay? Some people's bodies respond to 45 minutes of exercise, some people need an hour of exercise, some people need just 15 minutes of exercise. Every human being is different. So the next time you walk around saying, I'm doing a 16-8, ask yourself, question the stupidity of that statement. Why 16-8? What is the magic in 16 hours? Okay, what if your body needs just 14 hours? What if your body needs 18 hours? So by putting yourself into a box, like we've all been put into our box with our, you know, education and everything around us has put us into a box of believing that only life moves in this way, health moves in this way, medications are for a lifetime, and we don't look out of the box to make that change. So a 16-8 is the most stupid thing you can do with intermittent fasting, okay? You boxed yourself into a rigid algorithm that is defined by some article that you read. Your body may need just 14 hours of fasting. Your body may need 18 hours. Now, how do you find out the right amount of time? By listening to your body, by doing it the right way and mindfully going through the process. Your body will define how many hours of fasting you need and it's going to be different every day. Every day, the requirement for your body to fast is going to be different. There'll be some days that you'll find that you're not hungry even post 16 or 17 or 18 hours. That means your body is still in this fasting phase. There'll be some days that after 12 hours, you will have this physical hunger. That means your body is done with fasting and it is now asking you for food. So eat. In fact, when we look at all the data of our people and everyone doing it, you know, perfectly healthy bodies and all of that stuff, they do with just 12 hours of fasting. It is perfect for them. The body finishes all its magic, all its work in those 12 hours of fasting, and then you begin the building phase. For other people, it's 15, 16, 17, 18, or 90. So the first thing is stop making it a fad. The second thing is stop terming intermittent fasting as a weight loss plan. Everyone who does that, in fact, this is the people who go in with the intention of losing weight, Okay, never really achieve that goal. Change your intention. Intermittent fasting is great for reducing inflammation. Your insulin levels get more and more balanced. And because of that, there is a possibility and a pleasant side effect of weight loss. But if you go in, then all these people, they fast one day, they stand on the scale. Every day before the fast, after the fast, they stand on the scale. There's fluctuation in their weight and they start blaming intermittent fast. Blame yourself. Blame your logic, blame you. Don't blame a system of science that has always existed. You blame yourself for that. So if you're gonna get on a scale and start measuring, you know, the weight that you put on over the years and you expect it to go at one or two days of intermittent fasting, you have the wrong intention. You know, when you look at intermittent fasting that way, you are looking at starvation and deprivation. You think that just because I'm eating less, I should lose weight. You lose one, two, three kilos and you'll cripple your metabolism and then you will start putting on more weight. And then you blame the fast and you term it as a fat diet and it doesn't work anymore. Well, uh, 
Inflammation is the number one benefit of intermittent fasting done well. And if we reduce inf inflammation, we boost immunity. If we boost immunity, we get healthier. During intermittent fasting, during the fasting phase, our body automatically has time, more time to detoxify, repair, grow, heal, and all of that stuff, which it cannot do when the digestive system is working. So you end up with a cleaner body. You end up with less toxins in your body, which is why one of the pleasant side effects of intermittent fasting, well done, is an increase in your energy levels. People are like, I have so much energy eating less, because it is true that eating less is what human beings have to do today. We've been lied to over and over again about eating every two hours and snacking and snacking and snacking is good for us. More snacking has made us sicker and sicker. And of course, if you are irresponsible and you keep long gaps between your meals because you prioritize work or some, something else, you, you are gonna be more acidic and you are gonna have all of these problems. So please understand that the mechanism of feasting and fasting is inbuilt in the human genome. It is inbuilt in us. Okay, our bodies can go through fasting, our bodies can go through feasting. The obstacle is our mind. The obstacle is our mind. Our minds start making stories that, oh, if I don't eat, I'm not gonna have energy. It's not true. In fact, people who are fasting well will tell you they have more energy by eating less because we have something called cellular energy, which if we use, if we tap into cellular energy, we have energy to get through our day. We have energy for the body to heal. We have energy for our immune system to harness and work when we have cancers and other dangerous diseases in us. We need to harness cellular energy. We can't harness cellular energy when we're constantly digesting the food that we eat, the snacks that we keep grazing on throughout the day. <clears throat> We had this beautiful testimonial that came in from Russia, okay, from a lady who was 29 years old with arthritis. We've had many arthritis patients come in. Am I saying intermittent fasting is gonna cure you of your arthritis? I'm not using the word cure, but I am telling you it is gonna make your arthritis better because what happens is it's an autoimmune condition. When we fast, when we fast, we remove the triggers that can possibly trigger the immune system into flare-ups. So we've had arthritic patients who who send us message, messages that their pain has reduced for the first time in several years. The swelling in their joints have reduced. Again, inflammation. We've had people who are feeling better in terms of immunity, the glow in their skin, their hair quality. Why? You are harnessing the intelligence of your own human body, okay? Now, very clearly, intermittent fasting doesn't have to suit everyone. Okay, that's why we say it's not a fad diet that you follow. If it suits you, please do it. Don't overdo it. There are some people who overdo it and all of that stuff. Don't overdo it. There are days that you really feel like having a good breakfast. Listen to your body. Go ahead, have a great breakfast. Next day, move back to your intermittent fasting. If you do intermittent fasting the wrong way, it will harm you. It will harm you. And yes, it's true for diabetics as well. By fasting, it has a direct positive impact on your insulin, it's especially if you have insulin insensitivity, where the cells of your body do not know how to manage and utilize and respond to insulin. But again, if you're already diabetic, you have to be careful that if you're fasting, you don't go into hypo. So you need to do it in a supervised and smart way. Don't jump into it like a fad. At the same time, don't be scared of it because you've been told about hypo. Yes, hypo is real. You don't need to go into hypo by fasting. You can go into hypo by missing a normal meal, by postponing your meals, by going through too much of stress. So fear is one thing. Like I said, the mind is the obstacle, but whether you're diabetic or whatever, if you do it the right way under supervision with the right amount of focus and without fear, intermittent fasting is gonna take care of most of your health problems. I am not here to say that it would replace your doctors, your medications, please, let's be logical about that, okay? This is to enhance your body to make you better. You still continue to take your pills, visit your doctors, do all of that stuff that you need to. But the more you do this, I can bet there'll be a time that your doctors themselves will reduce your medication because your parameters are, look, are gonna look better and everything's gonna change. So number one, the number one rule is, okay, people say that you can have coffee on a fast and as long as you keep it under 50 calories, Okay, where did that come from? Under 50 calories, okay? If you are doing a fast, do it the right way. Intermittent fasting means only plain water. No lemon water, no herbal teas, no green tea, no coffee, nothing, okay? If you need it because you're addicted to caffeine and stuff like that, you are not fasting. Let's get that very, very clear, okay? You may think you're fasting, but you are not fasting. Common sense, common sense. In a fasted state, your body's cleaning up your stomach is empty, why will you put something as acidic as coffee into a fasted body? 
Okay, that's all the logic you need right now. You may pull up a hundred articles telling you coffee is fine, but use your logic. Use your logic, use a little bit of common sense, vitamin C. Fasting means water. You shut down your digestive system completely, okay? Fruit fasting is not fasting. You are still eating fruits, okay? You may do it for religious purposes. Don't fool yourself thinking you're fasting. You're just eating fruits. You're not eating other foods, okay? So if you're doing it, do it the right way. You may start off with eight hours. You may do nine hours the next day, 10, 11, 12 is the minimum. And then the maximum is completely up to you. If you push yourself because you're trying to compare yourself with other people fasting and do all of that stuff, you're ruining your health. Now in the building phase, you are supposed to eat. If you try to diet in the building phase, you are gonna harm your body. You are gonna harm your metabolism. You're gonna put your body into stress mode because building means my cells are screaming for nutrition and food, but I'm denying it because I'm trying to be over smart by thinking, let me diet in the building phase because I'm not hungry. A beautiful, pleasant side effect of intermittent fasting is your appetite will automatically shrink. This doesn't mean you diet more. You still eat in the building phase. You eat your proteins, you eat your fats, you eat your good complex carbohydrates, your nuts, your seeds. You eat well because building means build. The body's using raw material to build. Fasting means you stay away from it. Now, some people do it twice a week. Some people do it every week. Some people do it every day. That is up to you. What suits you, but even if you do it once or twice a week, believe me, the health benefits are tremendous from immunity to inflammation to pleasant weight loss and all of these things. I'm going to do a video very, very soon about how you can actually use intermittent fasting for weight loss when you do carb cycling, but that's a whole different video. And I first want people to get the whole concept of intermittent fasting to be very personal and for you to do it mindfully. Do it because it suits you. Do it because you enjoy it. Do it because you're getting a benefit. Don't do it because your friends are doing it. Don't do it because you read a story about someone whose life changed when they intermittent fasted. Start off normally, every human being is different. Sometimes your children are hungry if they're not manipulating. Don't let them eat, it's good for them. Their bodies don't want food. Their bodies are using energy to heal, to grow, to do something like that. We have to move out of the box of whoever created breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's great, I'm not against that timing so that we're reminded when to eat. But if we eat when we're hungry, that is the best way. That is your body telling you what is right for you. Not nutritionists, not dietitians, not doctors, not social media, not Google. Your body will tell you if you are mindful. Okay, many people are not mindful, they skip their meals, they don't know if they're hungry because they're too involved in their work or what they're doing. That is wrong. You are disrespecting your body. So intermittent fasting, break your fast the right way. Either dates or fruits, something soft, something which will go into your body, line your mucosal linings, your stomach, and then 15 to 20 minutes later, you can start off with your normal meals. You don't have to eat a big meal because your appetite will be small. The most common feedback that we get besides arthritis and pain and immunity and stuff is how people's sugar cravings are reduced when they start intermittent fasting because a clean body doesn't crave junk food. A toxic, unclean body will crave sh foods which are filled with sugar and junk and refined oils and all of that stuff. So you will find that your dependency on caffeine, on stimulants, on sugars and junk slowly disappears as you start doing intermittent fasting the right way. This is the future. This is the future of health. Everything else is needed but this is the future where you empower your own body to detoxify, clean, reduce inflammation, heal diseases and everything else. Do whatever is required, but harness the own intelligence of your body. And there is nothing better than smart fasting to harness the intelligence of the human body because energy that is saved from digestion goes towards every other function that is required by the human body to heal you, check out cancer cells, do everything that you basically need. So there have been Nobel Prizes that, are, that have been won in regards to fasting. It doesn't have the limelight at all because it challenges every possible, every possible, you know, uh, medical instrument out there. No one said fasting was meant to replace pharmaceuticals, medicines, or doctors. No one said that. But what we're trying to say is enhance invest in prevention because you do not want to fall sick as far as with it, if it's in your control. Prevention is the best medicine, okay? Do not let your body fall sick as, as long as it's within your control. We fall sick, you should have such a strong and healthy body that you can recover quickly. You may take drugs, antibiotics, whatever, but you recover quickly because your body is able to basically recover. Falling sick doesn't mean you're unhealthy. Even a healthy person will fall sick. 
It depends on how quick you recover. That is how strong your immune system really is. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep. Don't enter intermittent fasting with fear. If you've never done it, try it. Like I said, watch all the videos that we've done. Try it. You may achieve eight hours. Don't feel bad about that. Tomorrow you may do nine, and then 10, and then 11, and then 12, and then you will get so addicted to it, and then you will realize how much we have been mindlessly eating over the years. When we make that change, we will have a change in human health. Have a great day, everyone.